Hi, I'm Lisa Curcio, and I would love to welcome you here to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Today is Monday. It is June 5th. The year is 2023, and this is a YouTube live premiere, which means it's recorded, but I am live here with you right now in the chat. So do me a favor and log into your YouTube account so that we can chat and interact with you whether you're here live or you're watching the replay. Tonight, I have an easy card making layout for you that uses designer series paper that you are going to love. And wait till you see all the other samples I have for you. I'm going to provide one demonstration for you, give lots of tips and easy ways to do this, and then show you the other samples to go along with it. And you're gonna want the free project sheet. Inside my project sheet, you'll find pictures and cutting dimensions along with the supplies for all the cards I'm gonna share with you tonight. So you'll wanna make sure you download that, which is linked in the video description below. Next, I wanna take a minute to introduce you to Grace Hudson. You'll see Grace's name in blue off to the side. Grace is our moderator here on YouTube and a member of Lisa's Stamp Studio team. She's filling in for Gina Hawley while Gina is on maternity leave, and she is here to answer your questions and provide links for you. If something goes unanswered, please remember there's just one of her, so feel free to contact me through my website. Okay, we're ready to get started. We're gonna start with the card base. I did do this ahead of time, super easy. Four and a quarter by 11. I scored it in half at five and a half inches. And if you're like me, you don't do too many things straight. This is your opportunity to make sure those ends are really nice and aligned. And then we are going to go over that with the bone folder. Now we're gonna set this aside and come back and build on top of there. But the next thing we're going to do for this layout is we are actually going to use some designer series paper. Now a card layout is also known as a card sketch. Now this is a great card for beginners as well. This is also a great project to use those scraps of designer series papers. You're gonna need four of these and I have all four of them here. And these are two inch by two and five eighths of an inch. The first one is gonna set the map for everything. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to just judge about a half an inch. If you prefer to measure, you absolutely can do that. And for those of you that love measuring, let's go ahead and just do that for you right now. So I'm gonna bring in my ruler here. And because that's striped paper, that sure makes it easy. I'm gonna make a little mark at that half inch mark right there. I know you can't see it, but I've got it there as a guide. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold up this corner on an angle. Now you want this edge here to be as straight as possible. And that's where that striped paper comes into play, doesn't it? Works out really, really well. And then just create your crease. If you're not using a paper that has a vertical pattern like this, look for the space here to be even all the way up between the edge and the edge of the paper. I'm grabbing my bone folder and we're gonna go over that crease with that to make it nice and sharp. Now we have to do the other pieces. Now there's another piece and we're gonna actually turn this into a grid. So this one is actually going to have to come back to back. So I'm calling that a mirror effect. And we're gonna use our pencil. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna come over that with our pencil and we are going to trace that line. Now I love this pencil, I get a lot of questions about it. It's linked for you on my website under Shop Craft Room Favorites. The lead is very, very soft and the eraser is a champ. So you don't have to worry about marring your paper. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bring in my paper trimmer. I'm not gonna do any cutting, but because I wanna make sure that I'm exactly on that line, I can use the scoring tool that's here on my stamp and trimmer. So there is a cutting blade that comes with it. They navigate up and down out of the way, which means you can leave them here on that clear track. And that clear track is gonna be a champ because I can look right through that clear track and I can align that pencil mark to that dark area underneath, which is the track for cutting and scoring. So I'm looking here and here, and I'm gonna align it the very best that I can, and we're just gonna score. And then what we're gonna do is we are gonna fold back on this just like we did on the other one. All right, now we're gonna repeat this on the other pieces, but I'm gonna give you some tips along the other way because these two pieces, like I said, are gonna make a grid. So this one here on the bottom left is gonna to have to be done a little bit differently because the slant needs to go here. So what we're going to do is we are going to take these pieces like this. So again, mirroring it upside down and we are going to draw another pencil line. And I'm just gonna come over that and just trace it. And then once again, if you don't feel confident just folding it with your fingers, which I don't because I wanna make sure I can actually make that as even as I can. I'm gonna stick that back in my trimmer looking to align it 
and I'm going to score. So again, I have this other piece and we'll go over that with the bone folder in just a minute. Now you can see what's going to happen is we're gonna end up with that grid we talked about. Now we have one more and that slant needs to go this way. So we're going to mirror these two pieces, top and bottom, and I'm gonna fold this back and once again, we are going to trace with the pencil. This makes it so much easier than trying to do it by hand without having a template because they can all vary by a little bit and then the whole center is going to be off on your card. So I'm gonna put that back in the trimmer once again. We're going to align that the best that we can and then we're going to score. All right, now we're done with the trimmer. I'm gonna set that off to the side and we are gonna come in now with that bone folder once again. We wanna reinforce those score lines so I'm gonna go over them all to make sure that they're good. I'm gonna lay it out so that you can kind of see it, but wait till you see all the creative things that you can do with this. We're going to attach these flaps with a very simple method of using a dimensional, and that's gonna make it really nice and easy. So I'm gonna grab one of these here, and I'm gonna place one near the tip. You wanna make sure that it's not overexposed and it won't hang off the edges, and I'm gonna place one in each of those four corners. I'm gonna remove the paper backing, and I'm using my take your pick tool. I've attached the paper piercing tool attachment that comes with it, and that helps me to release that paper. They're, they're good and sticky. And now what we're gonna do now is just we're gonna seal that up. We're just gonna tack those down, and now those are all in place. Now here is where the magic comes in. I'm gonna push this off to the side, and obviously inside that panel you can put a greeting, but I thought it would be fun to do some images. So I'm going to bring in a piece of basic white cardstock. This is just a scrap, and we're going to do a little bit of stamping on here. So I'm choosing the stamp set called So Refreshing, and this is brand new in the annual catalog. It's offered as a bundle with coordinating dies. Check this out. Look at that little tablecloth. Isn't that cute? Or a little blanket if you're going to think of a picnic theme. Very, very fun. So you don't have to do any fussy cutting here. I'm keeping it simple and I'm gonna open up the old olive ink. Now you might be wondering why I chose that color. It's because it's one of the colors in the designer series paper, and that makes designing super easy, especially for those of you that are brand new. I'm gonna ink up that picture image, and I am going to stamp that here. Lots of firm, even pressure. This is photopolymer, which means the stamp is actually clear. So when you ink it up, it turns the color of your ink, which makes it really easy to use. I'm switching over now to Bubble Bath, which is that real pretty pink color that's inside of here. Now there is an image inside the stamp set that fills the picture, but I don't want it too pink. So I'm gonna bring in a scrap piece of paper here. I'm gonna ink up the image. I like to travel to make sure I've got good coverage. I'm going to stamp off a layer of ink on that scratch paper so that now it's going to be lighter and then I'm gonna stamp that here and that's gonna very lightly fill that picture. Now I'm cleaning that stamp off camera and I'm switching over to this one. There's a little slice image which I absolutely love which means you can make lemonade, you can make fruit punch and in my case it's gonna be pink lemonade. I'm gonna use this full strength. So I'm gonna stamp one here and another here and another here. You can put as many as you'd like. And then I'm gonna clean that stamp off camera. Nice and simple, like I said. And the magic of the dies is it's going to do all the work for you. So let me show you the dies once again. There's one here that's going to cut out this image, but there's also another die that actually cuts out an entire picture. So you've got ice cubes and you've got strawberries and little pieces you can put together. Or of course, you could create a floral image and put it inside the pitcher as well. And there's dies for this too. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and die cut that, which I did ahead of time. But I wanna give you a tip about the die. Now I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna show you. Oftentimes, if you're like me, you have it all positioned just right and it slips all over the place when you go to put it on your mat for your cutting machine. So I love this. This is the post-it labeling and cover-up tape. I've had this for two years. It's gonna last you a long time because you can use the pieces you tear off multiple times. I've pulled off a piece and I ripped it in half vertically. And then all I'm gonna do is line up the die exactly where I want it. And look, you're gonna tack it right down onto the paper and it's gonna hold your die in place and you don't have to worry about it losing its positioning. Then once it's done, you can take these pieces off and you can attach them to the handle of your die cutting machine or right here to the dispenser so that you can use them over and over again. 
Now I did do that ahead of time just to save a little bit of time here in the video so you didn't have to watch me do that. So here's our image. But let's start by putting this together so you get an idea how to assemble it. This is the card base. I also want to make sure that I mention to you that this card base can be five and a half by eight and a half, or it can be the way I cut it. There's no right or wrong way. And that pretty designer series paper comes from a brand new packet that I want to share with you. It is called Delightfully Eclectic, and I don't think it's getting enough airtime. So I want to show you the pieces, because if you're like me, oftentimes inside the catalog, it's not really represented big enough for you to be able to see it. And there's a lot of pieces here. So there's this beautiful floral, and I love the colors here. And then some more florals. Look at those for the lemons and the peaches. Some pretzels, some more florals, which is the one we used. There's more florals here, and then I'm gonna keep going. So we've got some strawberries, we've got some swans, hearts. And look at, I love the fact that there's a little bit of everything. But if that's not enough, this is double-sided paper. Look at all the different designs that you have on the back side, which means you can use this for all kinds of occasions, including masculine theme cards. Now I'm going to set that off to the side, and I am really excited to share with you how to put this together. My first recommendation is if it's your very, very first time, lay it out first. So you're going to want to leave a very narrow margin around the top and the sides, and do yourself a favor. Use that stamp to your advantage to hold it in place while you get an idea of where the pieces go. And then the other pieces are going to go here. Now, once you get them laid out where you want, you can use your pencil to trace the inside circumference so that you can make sure you adhere them perfectly. And again, this is where that take your pick tool comes into place. So you can just kind of make sure everything is perfectly aligned. And then once it is, like I said, you can trace it with the pencil. I'm gonna work a little bit differently because I know a lot of you don't like the fussy part. So I'm gonna start up here in the upper right-hand corner of the card. I'm gonna bring in my silicone craft sheet, and this is where we're going to add the adhesive. Now, you can use liquid glue. Just be sure that you don't place it too close to the edges, otherwise it's gonna be oozing out all over the place. And this is the Stampin' Seal Plus. This adhesive is very, very strong, so I don't have to worry about covering every area. If you have difficulty doing things straight like I do, turn the paper horizontally and you're looking to leave that small margin. So I'm gonna leave, oh, that's about an eighth of an inch. I'm looking here across the top and across here to make sure that it's as even as possible. Now I'm not pushing. I'm gonna come over to the next piece and I'm gonna to work to the left of it and we're gonna do the exact same thing. So we're gonna add a little bit of adhesive here to the back side. And this time I'm going to turn it horizontally as well because I want to try to line up the edges of this designer series paper. And I want about the same circumference here as here. And I have better luck doing that if my paper is horizontal. It allows me a better vantage point. And none of us is perfect. So don't worry if it's not identical. You're looking just to do your best visually. We're gonna skip down to here. And once again, we're gonna do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna add a little bit of adhesive here to hold that in place and then we are going to turn it. I find that this tip is going to help you lots and lots. This time you're looking here, here, to make sure that these are about the same margin. Once you're happy with it, lightly tack that in place. And again, I'm looking here across the bottom. I'm gonna to come to that last piece now and we're gonna use the adhesive. Keep in mind with liquid glue, you have a little bit of shimmy room. If you shimmy a little bit too much, liquid glue can leave a little glue in the center where you've moved it. So that's where an adhesive eraser is going to be a wonderful thing. And I'll show you one of those in just a second. So again, looking here the best I can, looking across the bottom. And again, it's just laid there. And I like the way it looks. It looks good to me. I don't have to try to lift or move anything. So we're going to turn it upside down and we are going to rub from the back. Now, if you have used liquid glue or another adhesive and you find that it has marred your paper once it's dry, use this. This is an adhesive pickup. I recommend using it in one direction. It'll pick up the adhesive once it's dry. I have this linked for you on my website under Shop Craft Room Favorites, the same place I have the post-it labeling and cover-up tape, and of course that pencil you all love so much. I just link those things there because they're not part of my online store or sold by Stampin' Up, but it's a great way for you to be able to get those extra products to be able to help aid you in your paper crafting. All right, now we're gonna add our focal point. So I'm gonna flip that upside down and we are gonna add some dimensionals. 
Now I'm going to give you a piece of advice with all my years of paper crafting. The worst thing you can do is skimp on these because your handmade card is going to go through the mail meter at the post office. If these are not well balanced, the image will come out all lopsided. I'm switching over to mini dimensionals and I'm going to use one of those here in the handle just to kind of brace that. And I think I'm going to add one more down here at the bottom just to make sure that's all good and stable. You don't want those little edges catching on the envelope in and out as the receiver gets it. Again, I've removed those paper backings and I'm just gonna put this right here in the center. Very, very simple, but wait till you see the other samples. I did do this ahead of time. The cutting dimensions are inside your project sheet and I am gonna add some more dimensionals to the back of this. I kind of call these my little cheap thrill. They're very, very inexpensive and they allow pieces on your projects to become elevated to give them a little bit of a 3D look, which I really like. So I'm gonna center this now here near the bottom. So I'm looking at the word U just to kind of center it and we're gonna tack that in place. Now I wanted to play up some of these really pretty colors. And this is where I've brought in the brand new in color gems. Aren't these pretty? I saw this darker color and I thought to myself, that's gonna play up the center of those flowers so beautifully. They have adhesive already on the back. So I'm going to pick up one and I'm going to add it down here and then I'm going to take a couple others and I'm going to add one up here in the corner and then I'm going to add another one just kind of on a diagonal right here next to it. You're going to want to give those a really good push and there you go. You have your card. These are so pretty. As you can see, they have a real pretty shimmer to them. Again, they're called the in color pearls. I call everything a gem, but there you go. First card. Very, very simple with a turned up corner. Now, if you draw that pencil line and trace it and you feel comfortable just folding it back without scoring with the trimmer, go for it. Now, let me share with you those other projects I created. Now, this next one uses the Earthen Textures Bundle. So it's the stamp set and the coordinating dies. There is designer series paper that coordinates with this that is stunning. Check it out in my online store. So that's what I've used for this next card, and I know you're going to fall in love with this because of the metallics. This is the Distressed Gold Paper. Now the dies in this stamp set are a champ in addition to the stamps. The die here actually creates that beautiful fan, that palm fan. And you're going to notice that there's lines inside of here. So when you die cut it, it actually creates all the creases for you. And I just slightly bent on them to create a little bit of texture to that foil. And then I have the palm and of course just a simple branch here that I've added. There is a die here that cuts out the pot and here's one thing I love about it. While this is just a hair bigger than the die, I don't diminish any of the beauty of the stamped image. But you also can use the die independently with designer series paper. So it's kind of a two for one which I love. So again I've just added some metallic sequins here and then turned up the corners on that simple designer series paper. Very very pretty. Now this last one uses the bundle called Gone Fishing. Any fishing lovers out there or know of a man who is? We definitely have them in our family as well. And I don't know about you, but I don't have too many masculine sets. This one I love because not only do you get this rounded corner frame here, but you also get a flat aerial die of a tackle box. Do you see it? And then you can fill it with all the pieces as you'd like. And of course, there's some wave images here. Lots and lots of fun. So let me show you what I did with this one. So I used the coordinating designer series paper, which is part of that same bundle. Same here, matching paper. And then I just used some sponge daubers on my solid image that fills the fish. Added a lure, just added a little bit of blending brush color there and stamped my sentiment on the inside. This could easily be a Father's Day card, although I did use Happy Retirement. Lots and lots of fun and a lot of possibilities. If you want to go really simple, break out those strips of designer series papers that are scrapped and then just stamp your greeting and call it done. Now, as always, I love to know your favorite. So pop down right now in the comments and let me know which one you prefer. Your feedback is always very, very important to me. Now, a couple things I want to make sure that you know about. Right now, Stampin' Up! is in a designer series paper sale. Oh my goodness, can it get any better? I just showed you some great designer series papers and right now you can get them at discounts. There is selected patterns available in that sale, so head to my online store at lisastampstudio.com and click on shop. That'll navigate you to the store where you can see the promotion and which papers are on sale and the percentages. 
In addition to that, if you're like me and your wish list is lengthy and you want it all, I got it. Stampin' Up! right now is offering a custom starter kit promotion. And if you're wondering what that is, it means that you can purchase a whole bunch of products for a lot less money during this promotion. That information is going to be over on my website. You can click on join and you'll find that information there. I would love to add you to my stamping team. And oh, by the way, you do not have to sell. Perhaps you would enjoy the discount for yourself. Again, all that information is there. A couple things too, I want to make sure you know all about this. Stamp Studio memberships has turned out to be a raging success thanks to you. You all have told me how much you love it. There's two levels. $5 a month is level one. You're going to get a tutorial in your inbox every Monday. I create these tutorials only for the memberships. There's a little bit of everything in there, something very, very simple that you can duplicate and make lots of cards for. There's a little upscale and even a little bit more than that, and they vary throughout the month. The best part is my photos and tutorials are not watermarked or copyrighted, which means you are welcome to distribute them. It doesn't matter what country you live in, and of course, the only thing you can't do is sell them. But if that's not enough for you, there is level two here for $10 a month and you get everything I just told you from level one. Plus you get a fun fold card tutorial every month. You'll get a 25% off coupon to shop in my PDF tutorial library. And there will be five random product giveaway winners every single month. If you would do me a favor, if you've enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up here on YouTube, which is a like. It is a huge help for me. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Click the bell icon and the word all. YouTube will then send you notifications when I'm live and have premieres or videos so you don't miss anything. And make sure you mark your calendar for June 12th. That's next Monday. I will be back with more ideas for you, lots more in store to share Lots of new products and designer series papers and folds that I know that you are going to enjoy. And before you go, there's one last place you might want to subscribe to if you like the word free. Head over to lisastampstudio.com, scroll to the bottom, and you'll see the word subscribe. If you do that, I'll send you an email every Thursday with a free tutorial in there. No frills. We just absolutely love to have you join us. Thank you so much for being here with me this evening, and I look forward to seeing you next Monday. Have a wonderful night. Thank <laughs> you.